Morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. It's so good to have you guys. It's also interactive, so make sure that you jump into the chat if you can. If you're driving, don't. Hashtag live to join us live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining us at any other time other than the live 7 o'clock hour here. And also hashtag shared. I want to say a shout out to those of you who may be joining us on the side view cam from Instagram. And oh, no, I did not. I did not rehearse that. The side view cam from Instagram. What's up, Barry? It's good to see you, man. We've been talking about four kings, four kings of Babylon that God allowed the children of Israel to be taken captive by due to the fact they were not following the principles of God. This is so vitally important that you hear me. God doesn't punish his children. God wasn't punishing the children of Israel. God had given them a principle, everybody hashtag principle, a principle that the land was to be laid aside every seventh year so that the nutrients and the minerals in the soil could replenish and grow crops and feed themselves and feed their families and feed those around them. But they had farmed the land for 490 years and God had to take them, literally take them off of it so that it could be restored. And God allowed an outside nation to come and adjust, course correct, and discipline them and take them into what's known as the 70-year Babylonian captivity. Woo! Listen, how many of you have ever been going along in life and God had to course correct you or adjust you or discipline you? Another word for those phrases or another phrase for those words, I guess I should say, is that's God's leading you. Course correction, adjustment, discipline is hashtag leading. It's God leading you. So on yesterday, we talked about the fact when God course corrects, adjusts, or God, you know, disciplines you, the enemy is always there to steal, kill, and destroy from you. The enemy is always there to lie to you. The enemy is always there to attack you, especially when you're being course corrected. Because when someone is disciplining you, course correcting or adjusting you, pride will well up inside of you. And you'll think, I don't need this. I don't want this. I didn't do anything. It's not my fault. Who do you think you are telling me this? You're an outsider. Do you think you've got your life together and you're going to try to discipline, adjust, or course correct me? But God allows outsiders to teach his children when he puts them in course correction or God's leading them. So number one we talked about is pride opens the door to deception. Pride opens the door to deception. So if you've missed any of these teachings, make sure you go back on the page and follow up. So guys, I need you to do something very big right now. I need you to hit some hearts and hit some likes and go crazy on those things so that we can welcome those first-time guests and those even over on Instagram. What's up, Leslie, Grace, Ferguson, Barry, December? Hey, hey guys over on Instagram who are watching the side view cam. Hit those hearts, hit those likes, go crazy on those things. I'm going to show Instagram that you're doing it. Go crazy so Instagram can see it. Hit them, 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 hit them. Woo! What's up, guys? It's good to see y'all. Okay, so share this out. Get this on your page. Hopefully, we'll get a full day of audio. Pride opens the door to deception. We notice that Nebuchadnezzar was so prideful, he thought he'd done everything. He was the king. Secondly, we find out that Belshazzar, his grandson, was not really the king. He was kind of the under king, so he never felt like he was the real king. So that made him stubborn. God wrote handwriting on the wall. He ignored it. Belshazzar had seen the things of God, heard the things of God, knew the things of God, but stubbornness kept him from the things of God. Third, we find Darius come on the scene. Darius uh, is part of the Persian Mede coalition, but Darius is not a Persian. He is a Mede, so he always feels lesser than. He never feels like he's good enough. He never feels like he's worthy. So he's always trying to prove himself, and he's always trying to, you know, Uh, be uh, more than he is or make people think he's more than he is because he did not know his identity. So Darius was easily manipulated. Darius was easily deceived. Darius was a Mede who wanted to be a Persian. The actual king was Cyrus, but he was kind of like the under king, so he always felt like he was in second place. And that's the delusion of pride. The delusion of pride is that you can either think too highly of yourself or too lowly of yourself, and still not have an accurate assessment of who you are. 
How did, we talked about this on yesterday, how did Daniel avoid this mistaken identity and pride in his life? How did Daniel avoid becoming prideful because he was in favor with all four kings? Daniel had, you know, given the uh, interpretation of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel had, you know, uh, interpreted the handwriting on the wall. Daniel was under Darius about to become the first in command over all the others. How did he avoid pride? He knew the word of God. He knew the word of God. Therefore, he knew who he was. If you don't know who you are, please listen to me. Listen to me. Pride, stubbornness, and deception will open the door. Come on, come on, come on. Insecurity will open the door for you to be deceived, for you to be manipulated. So they come to Darius, his underleaders, and they say to Darius, Oh, great Darius, no one should pray or bow to anyone else but you for 30 days. We're all in agreement that was a lie. Oh, great king, oh, great majesty, live forever. They were appealing to Darius's hole in his soul. They were appealing to the hole in Darius's soul. What was the hole in Darius's soul, you might ask Instagram? Well, that's a great question. The hole in Darius's soul was he didn't know who he was. And so there was this void inside of him that he needed to be filled by something where someone could tell him that he was important so that he could be told he was loved, so that he could be told that, you know, he's the king that he's the majesty, that someone could tell him that you're worth something and, and we'd miss you if you were gone. All those things that we all need. So they come to Darius and they appeal to that and they lie to him and they say, we're all in agreement that everyone should bow to you. Well, everyone wasn't in agreement, were they? Daniel wasn't in agreement. So, O oh, great king, live forever, sign a 30-day law of the Medan Persians that cannot be uh, you know, undone, cannot be unwritten. And so Darius did. So number two, Here's the point of today's uh, conversation for both of us on Instagram and those here at the uh, Pray First Live on Facebook. Number two, pride always brings regret. Pride always brings regret. Everybody hashtag regret. Pride always opens the door to regret. Pride always opens the door to deception. Darius was easily deceived because he didn't know who he was. Other people spoke into who he was. How many of you are living based on what other people or who other people have told you you are? Oh, you're just ignorant. Oh, you're just stupid. Oh, you'll never change. Oh, you're not worth anything. Oh, you're always going to be second. Oh, you're one of those Smiths on the other side of the tracks. Oh, you're this and all oh, you're that. Guys, if you don't know the Word of God, you will constantly be trying to fill a void inside of you. That void is insecurity. The root of all pride is insecurity. Insecurity is rooted in deception, stubbornness, and pride. Pride, stubbornness, and deception is rooted in insecurity. You will always be walking around with this, I need to prove something. I've got to do something. I need to be like other people. I've got to do what it takes, whatever it takes. What's up, Bridget? What's up, Katie? What's up, amazing Westman? All you guys over on Instagram. Pride always will open that door to regret because any time you make a decision, listen to me, any time you make a decision based on pride and insecurity and not the principles of God, you will regret it. Any time you base a decision on pride and insecurity, any time you base a decision on pride and insecurity rather than principle, you will regret it. Darius made a decision that he would live to regret. Darius said, okay, yeah, you're right. I should be worshipped. Everyone should bow down. I'm glad you all feel that way about me. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Woo, you love me. You really, really love me. And then he signs a decree that says that everyone for 30 days has to bow and worship him. Daniel hears this and goes to his upper room, which was his custom. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, I believe it is, which was his custom when he did on a daily basis. Daniel was praying before the tribulation comes. I need you to hear this. You need to be praying before the tribulation comes. You need to be praying before the tension comes. You need to be praying. You need to have a relationship, faith-based uh, time with God in his word. Daniel, listen, Daniel went to his place and prayed. He opened the windows toward Jerusalem because he'd read that in Psalms. He did it three times a day because he'd seen it in Kings. He knew what the Word said, so he acted on the Word, and he was doing this before the trouble came. A lot of us are trouble-time prayers. And by trouble-time prayers, I mean when we get in trouble, 
No, oh, God save me. We get in trouble. Oh, crap. You know, some of the famous last words of an atheist is, Oh, God. You know, oh, crap. Is, you know, I got to pray. I need to pray. I've done everything else. No, 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 no. Daniel was praying before it happened. Anytime you make a decision, I need you to know this. Based on insecurity or pride, you will regret it. Daniel chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. So he signs this law that everyone is to worship him. Daniel could not do that based on the principles of God. Sometimes you have to do the hard right over the easy wrong and be willing to die for what you believe. Ooh, that's tough right there. Daniel chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. So at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and be thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, May your God, who you serve... So Daniel, he's like... he's. King Darius did everything he could before this scripture's here. King Darius did everything he could to reverse his decision. How many of you out there have ever done something and thought, why did I do that? Anybody, hit some hit some what's ups or some yep yeps or hit some thumbs. Has have any of you ever done something and thought, why in the world did I do that? So Darius is trying to reverse his decision because now he's got to throw his best man in the lion's den. He has no choice. He can't back out. The king has to be a man of his word. The king, who is certainly not really the king, he's not Cyrus, he's Darius, cannot break the laws of the Medes and Persians. He has to show the people, I am strong, I am king. So he writes this into command. How many ever done something and wished you hadn't done it? Yeah, me too. So the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested, thrown into the den of lions. And the king said to him, Daniel, may your God whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. He was not mocking. Darius was saying, implore your God. I've seen your God. I've heard from your God through Belshazzar, through Nebuchadnezzar, through Nabonidus. I've heard about your God. I've seen what your God can do. I see how different you are. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The people around you should see the gospel preached through the way you live. And Darius saw that in Daniel. He saw that there was something different about Daniel. He may not ever believe in his God. He may never participate in his worship. He may never be a follower of Jehovah. But he saw something different in Daniel. He knew Daniel was faithful. He knew that Daniel was something different. He knew that Daniel was more than just somebody who'd been walking around and doing these other things. So may your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Okay, guys, they're saying there's no sound over on the Pray First page on Facebook. This is something they're dealing with all the time. Uh, We don't know what's doing it. Um, So I'm just going to continue the teaching here, and hopefully it'll keep a recording so I can send it over there. What's up, Aaron? What's up, Amy? So at last the king gave the orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to him, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone. Darius didn't want to do this. He sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seal of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep all night long because he'd made a decision. He'd made a decision and he wondered, why did I do it? Anytime you make a decision based on insecurity, stubbornness, pride, anytime you make a decision based on deception, you will regret it. When you have insecurity, come on, come on. When you have insecurity or rejection in your life, you will accept some opportunities that you should have never accepted. You will accept some opportunities that you should have never accepted. I hope everyone can hear this. I hope that everyone can hear me clearly. When you base your decisions on pride, insecurity, when you base your decisions on deception and stubbornness, you will regret it. When you allow or when you accept opportunities, you should not have accepted. I'm going to give you some examples. Here's why we do it. 
We do it because it meets a need in us rather than asking God, should we do it? Before you make a decision, we should ask God, should we do it? Is this something we should do? Not something we could do. Can I tell you that God's will is not confirmed by it's a good deal? When you want to purchase things and you find a good deal, that doesn't mean it's God's will. When you want to get married and Mr. Available's there doesn't mean it's Mr. Right. When you want to get married and Miss, Miss Available's there and, and it's time for you to get married and you've been waiting a long time and, and you know, you, you know, you're about 19, you're nearly an old maid in the South or whatever. When, when those things are going on in your life, when, when, when there is this hole inside of you that needs to be filled and you're walking in insecurity and fear and doubts and when other people are telling you who you are and, and an opportunity comes along, that opportunity uh, grabs your eye. Guys, don't take an opportunity uh, without praying and asking God, should I? When you have a root of insecurity, when you have a root of rejection, everybody hashtag rejection, in your life, you will accept opportunities that you should have never accepted. And here's the reason. It meets a need inside of you rather than asking God, what should you do? Let me give you some examples. If you make a major purchase because you're sad, if you make a major purpose purchase because you think it'll make you happy, if you make a major purpose because this is the next step in your life, Home ownership is the next step in your life. Getting a new car is the next step in your life. Uh, buying that jewelry is a new next step in your life. Now, when you make a major purchase and you're not following the principles of God's word and the principles of finance and the principles of investments and the principles of margin in your life, it won't ever matter how much you make if you spend everything you make, okay? Pray. Make a decision. I mean, when you have a major purchase, when you have something like a marriage, like, I want to get married. I want to have a family. I want to, I want to do something with my life. And an opportunity pops up and you just take it rather than pray about it, think about it, ask God for direction, ask God for clarity. When insecurity and rejection and deception and you don't know who you are is part of your decision-making process in your career, in your schedule, and you don't have margin and you don't have direction and you don't have clarity, you, like Darius, will have a feeling like, oh, this feels so good. Everybody loves me. Everybody wants you. And you will, I mean, oh, we got the big house that, you know, took my grandparents 45 years to get. We did it in 45 days, and it's easily monthly payments. And when you marry that guy, just because, oh, he's cute, that don't last forever. And, oh, he talks to me. They don't keep talking. And, oh, he's just, you know, he's there, and, you know, he's single, and I'm single, and I'm over 30, so I'm desperate. You're not desperate to make a mistake. And, and oh, I just have always had a dream to have a business, and I've always had a dream to do this and do that. Woo! What? Your dream to do something needs to be backed up by the principles of God's word. Major purchases, marriage, relationships, career, schedule. Have any of you ever ex received or accepted opportunities? Come on. Received or accepted opportunities and look back and thought, why did I do that? My plate is too full. I want to say this last thing and then I want to go. A good deal is not confirmation of God's will. Mr. or Miss Available is not necessarily God's plan. Mr. and Miss right now might be okay later, but you're not ready right now. If you're making decisions to make you feel better or to, you know, to 
to give you identity. I, I, I want to be a married man. I want to be a married woman. I want to be Miss So-and-so. I want to be the husband of so-and-so. I need that house. I need that car. I need that phone because they make me who I am. I need these clothes because if I don't have these clothes, I'm not who I am. I need, I need, I need, I need that business. I need to do that. I need to be known. What happens when you lose that spouse, you lose that job, you lose the ability to have those things, you lose what other people said, you lose your friends because they weren't really your friends. Come here, 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 come here. What then and who are you? Make sure you know who you are in Christ like Daniel and make sure you're not making decisions based on pride, insecurity, stubbornness like Darius. And God will bless you. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that we're learning from this, that we're struggling through this, that we get through this. And Father, that you will give us your direction, your clarity, your will. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you for the 20 minutes you gave me. I'm so sorry, Facebook. I don't know what they're doing to our videos over there. If you can hear me now, hit some thumbs, hit some hearts, go crazy on those hashtag live, hashtag recorded. Uh, those of you who jumped over here on Instagram, thank you so much. Hit those hearts, go crazy. Those are some really pretty color hearts over here on Instagram. So guys, we're going on every platform. We are not going to stop. Uh, Pray First is going to continue. Uh, love you guys. Have a good day. Bye, everybody. And I have no idea if I can even save this over here. <laughs> Bye, guys. So, Instagrammers, I don't know if I can save this and, and uh, replay it, but I'm certainly going to try. Bye, guys. Hashtag Pray First.